Hello, and welcome to a peek inside the Space Vault at the New Mexico Museum of Space History. I'm Education Director Dave Dooling, and today I'm going to take you from pinholes to black holes. Hidden among the boxes and artifacts at the New Mexico Museum of Space History's Support Center is the ancestor of one of the most successful telescopes ever built. It's easy to overlook, just a bundle of old electronics and a metal plate full of holes. And that's the key to locating mysterious gamma ray bursts, black holes, and other deep space beasts. It's a multiple pinhole camera known as the Uniformly Redundant Array, or URA, built at Los Alamos National Laboratory. But the pinhole cameras you might know have just one opening. Pinhole cameras have been used by artists for centuries. Camera obscura means darkened box, which is all a camera is, a box with a hole in one side. Because light travels in straight lines, it will pass through a pinhole and form an upside down image on the other side. Many primitive animals, like the chambered nautilus, have pinhole eyes that evolve from light sensitive skin that grew inward. More advanced eyes, like our own, have lenses that focus light. Telescopes use even more complex sets of lenses and mirrors to focus light into stunning images of the heavens. So why take a step backwards? It's because electromagnetic radiation doesn't react the same with all materials. Gamma rays are so energetic that they will pass right through the optics that focus light. But metal can block gamma rays, and this is where the pinhole camera comes back into play. Like most solutions, pinhole cameras have advantages and disadvantages. On the plus side, they are simple and form images that sharply outline everything near and far. On the minus side, that sharpness requires a tiny opening, meaning a decent image will take minutes or hours to make. Larger apertures mean shorter exposures and blurrier images, but a thousand pinholes will produce a thousand sharp images overlaid on each other. So, the next step is a computer with special software to deconvolve the images, that is, to unfold everything. The URA pinhole pattern looks random, but has an almost eerie mathematical property that allows the thousands of overlapping images to be uniquely unfolded. But why is such a camera needed in the first place? We have to step back almost 60 years to a treaty that led to a startling discovery. In 1963, the United States and the Soviet Union signed a treaty to ban nuclear bomb tests in the atmosphere, oceans, and outer space. To ensure that the Soviets did not cheat, Los Alamos developed the Vela Hotel satellites carrying nuclear flash detectors. This engineering model is another artifact and future story in the vault. Twelve Vela Hotel satellites were launched, starting in October 1963. Things were pretty routine until July 2nd, 1967, when something rang the bell on Vela's 3 and 4. No one remotely suspected that stars could change over seconds or, for that matter, produce gamma rays. So no one had looked to see if there were non-nuclear flashes in the data. When gamma ray bursts were found, it was very puzzling. More bursts followed, and eventually Los Alamos scientists determined that these were natural, powerful events from far outside our solar system. From this was born the new field of gamma ray astronomy, and satellites soon started carrying better detectors. Scientists now faced a new challenge. Bursts appeared and disappeared faster than detectors could pin down their locations. Not until December 14, 1997 did a coordinated network help the Apache Point Observatory above Alamogordo capture the first visible component of a gamma ray burst. So how best to catch them in the act? The answer started emerging in the 1970s as Los Alamos worked on advanced pinhole cameras. The Los Alamos team included a graduate student named Ed Fenimore. Using Aero B-150 sounding rockets at White Sands Missile Range, they tested pinhole cameras by observing the sun. Fenimore's work led him and Thomas Cannon to file for a patent in 1978, granted in 1980, for a system utilizing uniformly redundant arrays to image non-focusable radiation. It promised a strong, clear signal with very little noise. Sounding rockets are still a great way to test new concepts. But what goes up doesn't always go up when the bursts go off, and must come down. The opportunity for a longer test soon emerged, NASA's Space Shuttle. Through the Air Force's space test program, Fenimore proposed flying a larger version of his pinhole camera. Originally, it was scheduled to fly on the first shuttle mission out of Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. The crew had started training when Space Shuttle Challenger was lost in early 1986. In the changes that followed, 
the payload was assigned to the STS-39 shuttle mission. That payload, Air Force Project 675, included instruments for studying the Earth's northern lights and the space background. URA itself was, well, mostly just a box. Only a hexagonal bit of foil to block visible light really showed its business end, staring over the starboard side of the shuttle. Ten feet behind that was a complex set of detectors, coupled to one of the most sophisticated computers flown on shuttle. It launched on Space Shuttle Discovery on April 28, 1991, and soon ran into trouble. Data recorders refused to work, so the crew did an emergency electrical bypass so data could be sent directly to Earth. URA observed the usual suspects, like the Crab Nebula, the center of our galaxy, and Centaurus X3, to compare with earlier X-ray images. URA worked well, helping Fenimore and his team earn a spot on NASA's High Energy Transient Explorer, or HETI. The Los Alamos team supplied a wide-field X-ray monitor that gave X and Y coordinates of a burst. HETI-1 was lost during launch, but HETI-2, launched in 2000, was highly successful. Over the next four years, HETI-2 observed more than 80 gamma-ray flashes and sent precise locations within tens of seconds. It helped pin down the location of short gamma-ray bursts and implied that they were the result of the collision of two neutron stars. Bigger things were in the works. The Los Alamos team won a key spot aboard the Neil Garrels Swift Observatory launched in 2004 and still operating. Swift isn't an acronym. It describes the spacecraft's agility as it swings into position to observe gamma-ray bursts before they fade. Knowing which way to point the spacecraft is the job of the Burst Alert Telescope, or BAT. This is URA on a grand scale. At 4 by 8 feet, it's the largest pinhole array ever flown, 20,000 times larger than the first to fly on the Araby rockets. The mask at the front has 54,000 lead tiles, each thinner and four times smaller than a penny, outlining 54,000 holes. Combined with 33,000 tiny detectors, BAT observes a chunk of sky 200 times the apparent width of the moon. Most of the time, BAT slowly maps the heavens in x-rays about as energetic as what you might get at a hospital. When a burst is detected, it switches into high gear, quickly telling the satellite which way to point. It does this with a computer far slower than your desktop or cell phone, but resistant to space radiation and powered by a genius-level program developed by David Palmer of Los Alamos. In nearly 16 years, BAT has detected more than a thousand gamma-ray bursts, including four on one day, powerful X-ray flares from a red dwarf star, and a new black hole near the center of our galaxy. It has helped SWIFT become NASA's second most productive scientific observatory, leading to more than 1,600 scientific papers. And the sources of the gamma-ray bursts that started this long quest? Some are caused by starquakes on highly magnetized neutron stars. Others likely are neutron stars swallowing each other to become black holes, or supermassive stars hammering their cores into black holes. The only certainty is more questions as we peer deeper into the heart of the universe. Not bad for a pinhole camera. Thanks for tuning in, and keep watching for another peek inside the Space Vault.